uh, 0.11 version it's it's actually the PHP version uh, so if you go to php.net this is where you get all the information about PHP if you want to find um, uh, uh, if you want to find about a function like if I want to find about JSON encode we'll be using that function uh, in this tutorial so I'll show you how to use this so you'll get all the information and the parameters which parameters to use you'll get all the information and how to use that along with the examples and there are other examples that users or programmers like us have created previously so um, you can get all this information now uh, if you go to php.net you'll, you'll see the versions that are stable uh, that are that are the stable versions right now and you'll also see uh, versions that are beta so we are we now have a stable version of 5.6.11 so this XAM server is actually up to date so you can download this 108 megabytes um, a 32 bit a bit version so you simply uh, need to download the software and just uh, install it on your Windows machine like any other software and you'll get something like uh, this let me show you um, okay because this is I'm running this on a Mac so it will be a little different okay now it's open so um, it will look a little different but what you need to do is that um, on your Windows machine you'll get this three things you'll also get more than three things I guess so um, but what you need to do for this project is to you need to start the Apache web server this is really important you need to press on start and when it, when uh, it's already started or when it's already working you can just run your website on it and you will also need to start the MySQL database if you're planning to use a database for your website but I'm not going to uh, actually use a database right now I'll just simply show you how to manipulate your sites using JSON although I'm not going for the NoSQL, NoSQL part or NoSQL part perhaps so you just need to run the Apache web server and that's it um, and obviously you need, you'll need to place the project files inside your XAMPP folder so how to do that let me show you um, I don't need this right now so let me stop this and I should stop this too okay it will take some time I guess so nonetheless let me open up finder okay it's um, I'm ready to go right now okay so um, I have placed um, my XAMPP you'll get a XAMPP folder when you uh, install it inside your Windows machine so uh, if it's uh, inside your C drive if it's inside your D drive wherever it is you'll get something like this so let me open this up so you'll see all the similar folders no matter, uh, I mean, it's uh, although I'm running this on Mac, the folders will be similar in every case, whether you're running this on a Mac or whether you're running this on a Windows machine, you'll get all these folders. So, the simple thing that you need to do is that you need to navigate inside that XAM folder, then open up this HDocs folder. This is where you keep all your projects folder, and whenever you try to navigate in your projects folder through your server you need to um, write localhost and you need to write um, you know maybe um, okay let me just show you what the one thing um, okay let me copy this just copy your projects folder copy practice then get back to your uh, hdocs folder this is the hdocs folder as you can see that this is issued out let me paste the item inside this so you can see this in here so simply when you are on your Windows machine and you're running the SAMP you simply need to just write localhost because I've named my project um, as practice I'll be writing this practice okay I need to run the server um, okay, let's cancel this off. Let me bring up uh, 
the case. Okay, now I need to run the server, at least the Apache server. Uh, this will take some time. I should, I should have done that already. Yeah. I mean, I shouldn't have stopped it. Okay, now I'm good to go. Uh, you, you just need to write localhost forward slash and you need to provide the project's uh, name. So here you go, it's actually running because I don't have anything inside this page. I haven't written any sort of code, so it's not showing me anything. But um, the way to understand that your server is running successfully, you just need to hit on localhost and forward slash it will tell you XAMPP for Windows I'm running this on Mac OS so it's telling me XAMPP uh, for Mac if you're running this on Windows then it will tell you that XAMPP for Windows so nonetheless that's how you use the software but if you're familiar with using a command line or a terminal on the Mac then you should definitely go for the previous method I've shown you so let me run this uh, server again let me actually stop this first Stop the server and okay. Let me close down. This has stopped. Yes, now I'm good to go. Okay, um, I will rerun the server from my terminal. Okay, it's running perfectly fine. Now, um, now we were talking about the PHP construct. So every PHP code needs to be started along with. Okay, you need to write this here. Every PHP code needs to start with a uh, with a special type of tag. So um, it's it's starting with the. Um, less than symbol question mark then php then it's ending with uh, question mark and the uh, greater than symbol so your php code will needs to be contained inside this so uh, any code that you write in php needs to be inside this um, inside this uh, opening tag and the closing tag now um, suppose we want to create a variable so a variable, let me name this as, suppose, home page. It's just a random name. You can name this as anything as you want. But remember that every variable that you write inside your PHP needs to start with this dollar symbol. So a dollar symbol needs to be followed by the name. Now, a name can have full stop like this. It's a dot, actually. Then your name can even have numbers like this your name can even have um, um, an underscore so um, you, you can definitely go for all of this um, all of these rules but you shouldn't go anything like um, you shouldn't use something like this so this is a mistake in in terms of programming constructs so you can't use that so if you can use either this home page because I have two words that's why the first word the F, the starting of this first word the first letter of this first word is as um, uh, is in sm is in lowercase or in small letter and the second word has um, ha the first uh, letter in the second word is in uppercase form so that's one way of writing this so uh, this is one style but there is another style like you can use a use an underscore and write home page so these are two form of casing so you can just use any one but i would like to stick to the previous one okay so one is known as the camel casing and the other one uh, no, is known as the pascal casing so uh, let's create a variable now a variable is essentially a place where you store stuff where you store information where you store uh, sentences english sentences maybe or any form of sentences uh, like uh, the sentences that we human use 
um, then you can use numbers and you can use that variable later on. Now the variable, why is that a storage space? Because it temporarily stores the value that you provide inside your RAM as long as your program is executing or as long as your program is running. So suppose if I